your crops are failing not because you haven't got enough money and not because you're not putting your back into it and working very hard. It's because you've, you're not putting God and his kingdom first. God in his house, his temple. And that's what God wanted his people to do, those Israelites. He wanted them to focus on his temple, which was in ruin. Now, Christ Church isn't in a ruin. You can look around. It's, I don't think we're doing too bad. We've got more than a foundation, which is more than the Israelites had. Okay, it does need a bit of TLC here and there. But I don't think we've got anything to physically complain about the state of the building, other than a bit of paint here and there. So we're quite in a different situation than those Israelites. But Jesus is saying to us, and he's saying this through the New Testament, and he was speaking to his audience, that we need to seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness. And so Haggai, God through Haggai, was saying to the Israelites, saying, yep, you need to focus on the temple because that was the place where they worshipped. That's where God was living with them at that time. Well, things with Jesus and his death and resurrection are quite different now. He lives amongst us. And there's a lovely phrase about Jesus being... um, the word became flesh and tabernacled amongst us. And I just love that phrase because tabernacled means a tent. And so those of you who like new wine, it's pretty much God pitched his tent amongst us. And I think that's such a lovely phrase that is. And you might want to think of it, you know, actually God lives next door to you in your street. So think about that, okay? When you go home, you know, God actually is a bit closer than living next door. If you invite him here, and he's living in the same house as you. But we're called to seek God first and his righteousness. But the Israelites, and we can do the same, I can do this as well, we tend to think, you know, I think I need to do this first, and then I'll give that to God. You know, if I I went to bed earlier, I'd I'd have a bit more energy, and then I could do a bit more work for God. And I think those are very human, normal thoughts. We, we tend to worry about, you know, we, we probably later on you'll be thinking, actually, what am I going to have for lunch and tea tonight? Or what are we going to wear? Oh, I've got a party to go to. And Jesus is saying, don't worry about these things. Don't worry about what you eat, what you're going to wear, what work you're going to do. He's saying, number one, this is the real key message, really. seek God and his kingdom first, his righteousness. Don't worry. It's really hard, that is, don't worry. He says, God will provide. It's quite funny just what things have been happening this morning, because I thought about all this sermon about three weeks ago. God was very generous. It's the quickest sermon I've ever written. And that was quite scary, actually. And it actually was one of those rare occasions where God did did it when I wanted him to do it, (laughs) as opposed to the other way around. Um, So I was quite shocked, actually, because I wasn't looking forward to today. That doesn't mean I've got it sorted, (laughs) but it's been very strange how things have sort of happened this morning. And because of the type of person I am, I tend to reflect as well. It's been about 11 months since I've stood up here, given another finance sermon. I can do more than finance sermons, by the way. (laughs) They're generally a bit more easier than these. (laughs) But it did make me think, I've been here four years now. Four years has gone very, very quickly. And I think an awful lot of change has happened at Christ Church. A lot of change. And, you know, I think the worship here is really good. And what Josh Jones does and did today, I think it was amazing. And anyone who helps us worship God is great, and I think it's really important. But I do think that one of the major things that happened here in those four years is when we give the worship team a rest. And at that time, that was really important. And so we got rid of the band for a short period of time. Why? Because we wanted to seek God first. We wanted to listen to him, and we wanted him to lead worship. In fact, we were listening to God. 
And so God had put on our hearts what songs to sing. He gave some of you words to communicate to the congregation. And that's what seeking God and his kingdom first is about. Actually, not everyone likes that. And some of those people left. Because it is a bit scary waiting on God and listening to what he has to say. I'm not sure I always like what God has to say. It doesn't quite fit in my little neat life. Normally, when I'm asked to do a sermon, I think, oh, oh, do I have to? This is what I'm saying to God. But of course, I know he's right. But I'm thinking, oh, you know, I've had a bit more time, and oh, it's going to be hard. I don't know what you're going to say. Do you really want this message? Is Christ Church ready for these little messages? That's really scary. That's why I don't like doing sermons all the time. Because God might tell me to say something that you might not like. A bit like Haggai in this sermon. So what are the fruits? We spent time as a church listening to a God for a short period of time. And I think lots and lots of things, good things happened. I think now we ha- there's a lot more peace with one another in this church. I think people get on more. In fact, there was little echoes of this when we had the moment of prayer before we started the service. It's really nice when God does that. It's so, so encouraging. The church has grown. You might not want to necessarily think that now, but actually there's lots of new faces. And it's really good seeing you. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit has brought you in, all those new faces to Christ Church. Yeah, some people have left. They didn't want to hear God, so they ran away. A bit like Jonah. But well done for stopping, (laughs) for being in a place where God wants to speak to us and a church that wants to listen to what he has to say. I think there's a real sense of community here. And we're growing in a community here as well. You know, we're not perfect, we're not sorted. But wow. And I hope you feel a bit about the, bit of that yourselves. It's not just me saying it. Um, sometimes go home and never think about this. This morning, I was, actually, I was having a cup of tea at the time. And I think, oh, how do you apply this? And I remember someone saying, you know, why don't we have a cup of tea with God? You know, I'm too busy to try and find space for God in my life and to listen to him. Because most of the time, he doesn't always speak very loudly. And it's quite hard. But so I was thinking about, you know, we can all spend, we can all have a cup of tea with God. Because we're going to have a cup of tea anyway, aren't we? It sounds really silly. But... You know, we've all got five minutes where we're going to sit down. Well, why can't, he, why can't God just well, draw him up a chair? <laughs> Invite him along. I think every single one can do that. And you know, it really doesn't matter where you are. You can do that at your desk at work. And you can do that in your bedroom or in your lounge, in your kitchen, in those little moments when you don't have chaos there because of the kids. Invite God in. Seek him first. Have a little chat with him. Say what's on your heart. And in a way, that's, I think that's what Haggai is saying in these points here. Seek God. Jesus is saying, don't worry. He's tabernacled. You know, he's, he's got his pitch in the tent with you. He's there. Invite him in. He's knocking that door. Open it. You could actually physically do that, actually. When you open the front door and say, come on, Jesus, would you like to come in? He's knocking. You know, life's not, st- it's not going to be easy even when you've got, it, it's never really easy when you've got God there because he's always oh, slightly challenges and he lo- no- likes knocking off those little chips that you kind of got used to. But invite him in. That should be the first message. Listen to God. Invite him in. What is he saying? And when I say the other stuff, you can say, actually, did, do you really mean that? Did, I don't like this thing that Dean said. And, Well, ask God and see what he thinks. Test it. So, go home, cup of tea. He's waiting. (laughs) Put the kettle on. And if you can do more than that, it's even better. Today's really, the sermon is really reminding people it's about gift day. And I want to kind of mention bits of new wine as well. There's... There was a, a number of sermon, there was a sermon there, and it mentions a couple of things I want to talk about, and um, I found that really helpful. A 
and we're going to talk about what's called new wine called housework and field work, and that we need to put both of them in order, or at least they need to, both components need to be in our lives. And so housework to start with. Those are the things that take place in this physical building when we meet as a church. And we, and we do that. You know, there's loads of jobs that are involved in here. And this is part of our giving. So it's not always about money. It's about the things that we do inside this building to, to corporately worship God. And so we have a worship team. We have people who talk. We have people who pray. We have people who clean and welcome and do refreshments, and do the children's work. Like now, there's, I think there's people doing children's work at this moment. Those are the ways that we can give to the life of the church, because those things are really important. And I encourage you to kind of go home and you know, invite God in, and hopefully the Holy Spirit is prompting you. Is there any ways that you can help in those matters? I'm sure there's more finance work to get involved in, and there's probably a number of different jobs. You know, you've got, got, I believe God has given you skills that are needed in this place. Okay, I, 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 they're already there. Okay, you've got them, and that's part of our giving to God's kingdom. And housework is really important. But also about housework, we need... We need finances to, to meet here and do the work inside this building, this church, Christ Church. And so gift day is very much about reviewing our finances. And we give financially weekly and monthly. Now, Haggai and the Old Testament would be saying roughly that would be 10%. And, and a lot of vicars and churches still kind of use that figure. I think Paul is slightly at odds with that because he would say we're to call, we're called to give generously. And he doesn't, I don't think Paul at all mentions a particular sum of money. The Old Testament does because they're full of rules. Paul is saying about giving generously, about listening to God and being sensitive to the Spirit. And so this time last year, I talked about 2 Corinthians 9-7 which I felt God really clearly speak to me about. You know, each man and woman should give what he, ha- he or she has decided in their heart. We're not to give reluctantly or just because Dean has told you to do that. Okay? Or the Bible would say under compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver. And so he's looking at our heart again. We don't pressure. What's our response? God is blessing us. I believe God has blessed every single one of us in this, in this room today. And it's about giving some of that back to the life of the church, the service that we offer here. Now, you had a letter about a couple of weeks ago, and um, yeah, it was quite sobering, some of the things there. It, it says that Christ Church spends about £2,180 a week, and we have a congregational giving of 1,000, nearly 600 quid. So that's about 600 pounds, roughly speaking, short every week. That's a lot. Now, Jesus would say, don't worry. We said, give it to him. And we are called to do that, to pray about it, to be sensitive to the Spirit, give what's on our heart. And I think we're, we're called not to neglect our giving to the church. And so, because of that, we have these one-off days where we encourage the church to review their giving, their weekly, monthly giving, but also, can they give in addition to that? Almost like a harvest festival. And some of you might have been prepared already and be able to do that today, or you'll be able to do it over the next couple of weeks. So please, I always just saying, listen to God. What's he placing on your heart? And don't let the enemy snatch whatever God is saying away from you. It's a parable of the sower situation here. You know, I think God speaks to us because we don't really like that. We allow it to be cast away, and gobbled up and picked by the birds or strangled by the weeds.
So that's the housework. Financial giving is part of that housework. It enables us to do the work that we do here. Don't neglect the other duties in the house. That's children's work, the welcoming and fresh refreshments. There are lots of jobs here that we need filling. Again, listen to God. Have a cup of tea with him and see what he says. That is a risk. Why are you here otherwise? You shouldn't be here if you're not prepared to listen to God. Why would you here? You could do, what, what's the opportunity cost if you're talking economics of being here? Or you could have an hour in bed. If you don't listen to God, don't come to church. The other equation is the field work. And field work is really important. So I'm not, I don't want you to, and God doesn't want you just to monopolize the church, because the church can monopolize your time. I think a lot of people in this place and churches up and down the country and the world know this. It's like a sponge and it can suck everything away. We're supposed to do some housework and some field work. Don't neglect the field work. And that's getting outside the church and getting your hands dirty. So think about that. It's being open to God's spirit. Think about what, well, yeah, listen to God's spirit and think of your witnessing at work with your friends. Some of you are already involved in Azalea and Roma Church and the youth work that takes place here on a Wednesday. Joe, they need more people here. Have a think about getting involved in that. There's a really good, that, you can get your hands really dirty on a Wednesday here, I presume, leave. Oh. <laughs> Don't neglect your witnessing in your workplaces, your family. I've got one, I went out with some friends yesterday and um, one of the chaps, um, you know, he was almost like a, 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 a um, recluse and he didn't go out very much. And he, he hadn't been on the train, he hadn't been outside Bedford probably for about, I don't know, 10, 20 years, something like that. Um, and the friend was praying about him and I saw him, he went, we went to London yesterday. That was the first time he'd done that for a very, very long time. And he's starting to go to church. He's making friends. And Andy, my mate, said, you know, I've been praying about this. And he's been witnessing. And it's a really great. It's almost like this chap is transformed. Spend time listening to people who are around you at work. I don't know. I mean, whatever the things you get up to outside church. Be sensitive to God's spirit. Have some fun. It's hard work doing field work, admittedly. Wednesdays were going to be hard work. Roma Church is hard work <laughs> when I used to do that. But it is good, and it is about trying to walk with God and get involved with the things that he's doing. I'm trying to do stuff. It's funny, Chris is here. We're really trying to activate the, the Christian Union at Luton Sixth Form College. And I'm not really equipped to do that, and nor is my other colleague, but we're going along and we're doing our best. And God has been so generous over it because we think we're awful at it. <laughs> this is why we've asked Chris to come along. <laughs> and um, yeah, because those guys are really sort of active and they want to get involved and in our students. And um, so if you know any students or, you know, children, relatives are at six, Luton Sixth Form College, there's a Christian union there. We have posted, we've put posters out everywhere. Get them involved. No, God is in at Luton Sixth Form College. I can absolutely promise you that. So seek first the kingdom. Put God, put God first. Worship isn't just about coming to church. I don't think there's many people, if any, at Christchurch that do this. Just come along and, you know, it's something to do. The heating's on most of the time. The biscuits are quite pleasant. <laughs> You know, worship at church is really important. Coming to church is where we worship. It's a place where we're equipped. And this is to prepare us for our outward ministry. It's to get in our hands dirty in the field. So the stuff that takes place here is really important. And we need your help to do that. We need your money and we need your service. Because this is equipping you to get your hands dirty outside. And then you come back 
and then I can pray for you, you can get some healing, and then you can go back out again. Get your hands dirty, get a bit damaged, come back in, worship, praise God. Hooray, I'm being used by God. I'm being prayed for, and then I can go out. That's the type of relationship. You don't just come to church for the sake of coming to church. It's here to praise God and then go out and make a difference. So, conclusion. Let's not neglect the work, our housework, of the temple or the church because it helps us in our ministries in the field. Let's get our hands dirty. Amen. Thank you, Dean. You've given us a lot to think about there. You know, just so gently uh, put across. That was that was great. Um, I just want to check that has has anyone here who has not yet received Martin's letter uh, that uh, was issued about three weeks ago about gift day. If you haven't, just put your hand up, and uh, Brendan will quickly race across to you. And the same is true of uh, if you haven't yet received a. Uh, a gift day envelope, uh, that, that separate from it, a little envelope with some typing on it. Is Jonathan over here? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brendan. So, gift day has got two aims: to invite the congregation to make a special gift to the church as a response of gratitude to God for his work in their lives. And also to encourage us to think in terms of giving regularly to the work of the church. I'd just like to refer to the, um, the, the numbers that Dean mentioned earlier. Yes, in the letter we set out that the cost of, the ch of running the church every week amounts to £2,180, of which 1580 comes in from the regular giving of the congregation, including the gift aid part of it. But um, the gap of 600 is not quite as bad as it looks because, of course, um, you know, there's a lot of other sources of income one very important source of income is from hiring out the church premises. And Leslie, our administrator, handles all that work and that is an important source of income to the church. We also receive grants from various bodies. Currently we're receiving a grant from the Diocese of St Albans uh, towards Lee's salary because of the work that he does with young people. Uh, we have been receiving this year the closing part of a grant from Sir Halley Stewart Trust also uh, towards Lee's uh, salary because of the work that he was, uh, do, is doing with mentoring young people in the community. And then you know, we've had other income during the course of the year. So the situation is not as bad as, uh, as that. We roughly balance our, uh, our books currently, just falling a little bit short. But the situation is a little bit different in 2015 because we know that we're going to lose those grants that we're currently receiving because they've reached the end of the three-year period. We also um, have had a significant uh, chunk of income this year in the form of a legacy, which you know, one doesn't expect legacies to come in every year. So there are reasons why next year we could be running at some £220 a week short. And we don't want to run into a financial crisis next year because we will be looking to recruit and uh, to, you know, welcome to this church a new vicar. And we want that new vicar to come in to a church that is thriving and ready to welcome him or her. 
So this is uh, the purpose of this uh, gift day, to put our house in order in that way. Alongside this, we have set up a small team working on looking for additional sources of funding for Lee's work, uh, particularly because a, a significant part of Lee's work is directed out into the community rather than just running the housekeeping part that uh, Dean was talking about. And it's right for us to seek some help from outside agencies for all the work that, does, that Lee does in mentoring and working in the schools. So we're going to try and sort uh, you know, some additional funding out, but funding is never something that you can rely upon until you've actually been uh, awarded the, the grant. And so this is not necessarily going to come rushing in. So just in terms of practicalities of the gift day, we've uh, given out these envelopes. So those are for use if you wish to donate by cash or by a cheque. If you already have uh, a gift aid declaration made so that we can reclaim tax on your giving, do make sure there's something in your envelope to identify that gift as coming from you. Um, then the other thing is that we're very happy to receive gifts by way of bank transfer and in the letter you've got the details of that but just make sure that you put on your transfer that it's uh, uh, in relation to gift day. And then if anyone would like uh, any information about giving regularly to the church, you know, I'd invite you to speak to Trevor Fisher, who unfortunately cannot be here this morning, or to myself. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Thank you, Nigel. And Ted has asked if he could just come and say a word to us all, haven't you, Ted? Brothers and sisters in Christ, most of you will be aware that early this year I suffered from bowel cancer. I had an operation, very competently done, it seemed, and everything went quite well with my recovery. And I've been able to say right up till today, when anybody asks me, how are you? Fine, I'm okay. But a little while ago, following the checkup program that I have with uh, two specialist nurses, I had a CT scan. That CT scan brought some rather unpleasant news. It is that my cancer has spread and is now attacking my liver. I've had to hang on to that information for a while in order that all the necessary examinations of the results of the scan have been examined and brought to the notice of my new, um, my new doctor, a lady doctor. We've had a couple of meetings and this new doctor of mine has been at great trouble to make sure that I understand the options available to me.
from the start, chemotherapy was mentioned, but the particular brand of chemotherapy seems to be quite an affair, quite a complicated affair. And thanks to my daughter who's accompanied me to the meetings and been very good at making notes at what's been said and so on, I've been able to take on board everything, I believe, everything that the doctor's been saying by way of advice and encouragement and pure information as to what I would be facing in the proposed chemotherapy regime. It's been my inclination right from the start to, to go along with the idea of chemotherapy. I remember how well my wife, my late wife, coped with it. But I think this is another regime altogether. And um, there's been a, a lot of detail coming my way as to what I've got to do, what I've got to watch out for, and things like that. But without going down to the chemo route, frankly, my future prospects are very limited. However, by following the chemo regime that they are proposing for me, there is hope. And so, on Thursday, last week, I signed on the dotted line for the chemotherapy that's proposed. So, from now on, I'm in the hands of the cancer unit at the hospital. And I ask you to, once the treatment and so on starts, to bear with me when the effects of it seem to take over what I might otherwise want to do, and so on. I can imagine I might uh, miss a men's breakfast early on a Saturday morning or something like that. What a shame. <laughs> well, that's the situation. I await now hearing from the cancer unit. Um, so, well, I haven't got anything more to tell you. That's the way things are at the moment. And it'll be going on for quite some time. At least one of the situations that I face is that I shall be equipped um, with drugs being fed into me for 48 hours while I'm up and about or asleep or whatever. Uh, it's quite a new experience. So, well, that's the situation. Thanks for listening. Uh, Ted, we want to thank you for your courage in sharing that with us this morning. And those of us that have been through that kind of treatment will know how, how demanding it is. But we want you to know that we're going to be walking with you every step of the way and praying with you, praying for you all, all along the way too, Ted because you're very precious to us, more than you probably know. So, yeah, can we thank you for coming up, Rochelle. Are you coming to pray for Ted? And, or you, and to encourage him. Thank you, Jimmy. We, we're going to take this music stand away now, and, and we're going to pray for you. Before we do that, Martin, yes. I just want Ted to know that... Take the microphone. Um, Ted, I want you to know...
Body in the name of Jesus. Receive the healing power of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I speak with authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Ted, you are healed. The operation will go well in Jesus' name. My God is all too faithful. God, I know you are faithful and I know you will do it for him in the name of Jesus. Receive the peace of the Lord. Do not worry because all will be well in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Father God, we pray. We pray for our brother Ted, Father. We pray for him for the inspiration that he has given to us in this church. We pray and thank you, Father, for this man of God, this mighty man of God, a warrior of God, a conqueror who is not afraid to stand up and be counted. We thank you for his faith. We thank you, Lord, for his words of inspiration to us, encouragement to us. And Father God, I pray, I pray in Jesus' name that I will see his smiling face 45 years from now. I will see him, Lord, at the men's breakfast. Please, Lord, spare him to come to the men's breakfast, to be with us, to encourage us men to stand up and be counted. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For our Father here, Lord. Father, you were bruised for our transgressions, wounded for our iniquity. Father, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we were healed, O Lord. Father, by your stripes, stripe, O Lord God, your son is healed in the name of Jesus. Father, healed of cancer, healed of any illness that might not be ha have been found yet, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Almighty God, he's restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we claim his healing, healing right now in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Father, Almighty God, he said that we should be like Jesus. Jesus doesn't have any cancer in his body. Therefore, your son doesn't have any cancer in his body in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Almighty God, we will choose to, re to, to believe the report of the Lord, which said that we are healed and we are restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, Jehovah, Lord, Father, oh Lord, Jesus said that it was finished, Almighty God. All our illnesses were finished, Almighty God. All our failures are finished in the name of Jesus. Amen. All that uh, illnesses is finished, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Lord God, healing is his portion in the name of Jesus. Restoration is his portion in the name of Jesus. What the Ken Kawam had eaten, Almighty God, Father, will be restored to him in the name of Jesus. In his health, Almighty God, he will glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus and testify of your goodness in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. 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 Father, Lord, I just want to lift up our Ted, and um, you said in your word that put me in remembrance, let us contain together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Father, I put you in remembrance of your own word. That Ted is no more a servant, but a son. And as a son, Father God, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, he has direct access to your throne of grace. Your word says that as Christ is, so is he. So I speak over your son from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot. Completely healed from every form of cancer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you said in your word that if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead indwells in him, he that raised Christ from the dead will also give life to his mortal bodies. Amen. Father, we speak life over every cancer cell. And we command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Instead has been an inspiration.
to a lot of us, particularly me. So, Father, that we may know that indeed you are the same yesterday and forevermore. I know you are. Show your miracle over him right now, even before the operation, that all those who don't believe in you may know that indeed Jehovah God is the one who heals. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah, I just agree with what Martin was saying about you, Ted, that you are precious in this church, precious to us, precious, of course, to Jesus. And I was reminded of the words of Peter quoting Joel, who said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And towards the end it says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And your example in this church, your quiet example, uh, is, it is an inspiration, as Brother Lowe has said. It's an inspiration, a challenge, and an encouragement, and a spur to all of us. And we proclaim in the name of Jesus that those words that are, the old men will dream dreams. That is not idle speak. That is something of the picture God has for the part you play in the life of the church. It's to do with dreaming the dreams of God. It's not to do with having uh, waking daydreams that have no value. It's to do, dreaming, to do with dreaming the dreams of God. And we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the face of this challenge, that Ted would find the dreams of God are on his heart. And that as that verse says, those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And with you, salvation includes healing. It is part of that sozo, that rescue, that redemption, that salvation, that healing. And we ask for it, invoking the name of Jesus Christ upon Ted's frame, that all cancer would wither and go. And whether you use the chemotherapy or you use miraculous healing power is, is uh, of no consequence to us, Lord. We pray you would heal him and that he would live the full quota of the days of his life. Every last day would be lived in joy, dreaming the dreams of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Ted, a word of encouragement. The other day you sat in the group where I was and you said, well, I don't hear from him. The Lord says that he is with you. Just feel him around you. I watch you during prayer time before service in the church. Even when people don't come, you are there. And just reading the word. The Lord says that as you read, open your mind that he is speaking to you. Through the words that you read, his words, they are alive. And he is with you. Feel his arms around you. He is there with you. Walk in this desert with you. He will see you through. Amen. God bless you, Ted. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we've been thinking this morning about giving giving it to the house of God, giving it to the field of God. And we've been thinking about really now giving our whole lives to God, everything that we are. Um, Dean made the point that, um, that the Old Testament tells us to, to um, give 10% te to God. And Paul has a, a kind of more open view of it. But actually Paul says, uh, I, I, am, I am crucified with Christ. And not I live, but Christ lives in me. And, and, and Ted is a exa living example to what it, what it is to be crucified with Christ. And no longer Ted lives, but Christ lives in Ted. Now and in all eternity. God bless you, Ted. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Ted. We are walking with you every step of the way. Um, Yes, yes. Ted, I know we sung this song earlier, but 
I want to sing it again, and I want you to particularly hold uh, the words of this song on your hearts. Uh, I'm going to do uh, Great Is Your Faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness Great is your faithfulness You never change You never fail, oh God True are your promises True are your promises You never change you never fail, oh God. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. So we raise up holy hands Praise the Holy One Who was and is and is to come Wide is your love and grace Wide is your love and grace You never change You never fail, O oh God Wide is your love and grace Wide is your love and grace You never change You never fail, oh God So we raise up holy hands To praise the Holy One Who was and is and is to come so we raise up holy hands to praise the holy one who was and is and is to come yeah we raise our hands lord um, and we just lift up ted to you this morning lord and as he goes through this chemotherapy, Lord, that his family and all of us, and all of his family here, Lord, that we will lift him to you, to, to lift him to you in this time, Lord. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks for these gifts of money. We pr thank you for this gift day, and for all the gifts will that come in over the next two weeks. <clears throat> and we thank you already for what. You will accomplish for the advancement of your kingdom here on earth through these gifts. For, Lord God, of your own do we give you. Amen. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Just um, one or two little things to draw to your attention. <clears throat> next week, um, next Sunday... There is a half marathon in Luton. Some of us came to the, con the, the conclusion that because all these roads around here are going to be blocked off next Sunday, that we better not to have a service. And then we went away and thought about it and, uh, and then thought, hang, we can't cancel the service. That's terrible. So um, we got swept up in that spirit. But now we're saying, no, no, there will be a service, whether there's two or three, or whether you walk all the way here from across the town, uh, whatever, there will definitely be her service here next Sunday. Okay, can you spread that rumor around the place? And um, sorry for confusing you on that. Um, on Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 22nd of October, at 11 o'clock in the morning, there will be our usual Wednesday service, um, but it will be a particularly special one because it will be our Harvest Festival service, and the gifts uh, that you bring in, um, you know, non-perishable foods, will be taken to the work of Noah, and then go, that will go to the homeless people of Luton. All right, that's Wednesday, 11 o'clock. If you can't come to the service, you can still bring in foodstuffs and that we will get them down the road to Noah. 
Um, on Thursday, please note this, everybody, by popular request, uh, we will be starting a weekly Bible study on Thursday evenings. It will start on the, the, in, in November. The date doesn't seem to be here. Upstairs, um, in November, it starts on Thursday evenings. Hope you can all come to that. I'm really excited. Um, most of the time, it, 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 you know, for the last 20 years, I've spent so much time trying to jolly people along to things, and you kind of almost run out of steam when you're coming up to retirement to jolly people along to things. And when somebody, people, a group of people come up to you and say, Martin, why is there not a Bible study in your church? You think, great, great, this is wonderful. They want to study the Bible. So we're doing it. I hope you'll all feel free to come. If you can't come every week, it doesn't matter. Each study will be a stand-alone thing. So you can come when you can. Please get behind that. And it's not instead of small groups. It's to complement your small groups. Your small groups are about fellowship and mutual support as well as Bible study. Okay? But this Thursday evening thing will be specifically for studying the Word of God. Right, there's all the other things that uh, you need to know about are on here. Any other things I've forgotten, anybody? Um, just to mention that, um, check what time the rows are open and closed next week if you do come. I think it's from like 10 till 12. So if you do it, want to come it, here, it, you it, need to be here Julie? a little bit early. Um, Julie Mac She's um, Julie's the expert. She works yeah. in the town hall. She'll tell you exactly what it is. But my advice to you is either park down on the over A6 up near Sainsbury's up there and walk in or park in Stopsley and walk down the hill. That's what I'd do. Or have a look at Lucent Borough Council's website. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. But you can walk if you're fit uh, and get here. Okay. Sorry, Ruth? Yes, yes, uh, yes, how useful uh, Josh walks all the way across town. So do, do get here, but, uh, cycle or whatever. Yeah, great. So, and it's lovely to see both our church wardens, Steve and, and Wendy, with, here, with us here this morning. Would you like to stand as we... Uh, oh, L Rochelle. Yeah. Please stand, please stand. Father God, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence this, with us this morning. Jesus, Son of God, crucified and risen one, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. Yes, and we continue to pray uh, for Ted and for all the concerns on our heart at this time. We continue to lift our prayers as the evening incense, as the evening sacrifice to you, knowing that you hear on heaven, in heaven what we pray here on earth. So let's finish our worship now, saying together, as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender I must give my every part. Lord, receive this sacrifice of a broken Jesus, what can I give, what can I bring To so faithful a friend, to so loving a King Savior, what can be said, what can be sung 
As a praise of your name For the things you have done Oh, my words could not tell Not even in part Of the debt of love that is owed By this thankful heart You deserve my every breath For you've paid the great cost Giving up your life to death Even death on a cross You took all my shame away That defeated my sin Opened up the gates of hell And have beckoned me here Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a King? Savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part. Debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. Yeah, I was pondering it and I thought, I'd die as well.